this. I've <laughs> been very, very busy with this. Look, it's invisible. It's a magical vial. It's a magical vial, yes. In the Glen Cairn glass. That's all Christy got to me. Thank you. Thank you, Christy, for doing that for me. I appreciate you. Ah, oh, what a good lass she is. All right, everyone. Are you ready for the show tonight? The rest of the night I'll be talking like this. Let's have some fun. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I don't know. All right, let's do it. Hey, how are you doing tonight? Welcome to the Inside Star Citizen Review. I am DG and you're watching one of the... Be <laughs> hey everybody, sorry, I have to switch gears here. We were having fun uh, before the stream. It looks as if there is a new wonderful tidbit hitting my eyeballs. Uh, assault on Stan incoming threat. This is one of those dynamic events uh, that they had talked about on Star Citizen Live last Friday. I'm really looking forward to it. Being put into uh, the verse and having like an event happen is going to be very cool. I hope it goes off without a hitch. I hope by pulling Delamar out and all those assets that this will this will be a lot of fun. That's really what I'm hoping for. Much, much success to this event. Praying, praying, praying that it will be amazing and improved upon. Let us watch it. Let us see what is in store, and then we will get into the Inside Star Citizen review. Attention, people of Stanton. We are the ones in charge. We are set off right. Putting that on pause for anarchy. Subscribing. For that value-added gameplay. Thank you, Anarchy, for coming in like a boss on that, dude. Thank you for coming in like a boss. Speaking of which, cap ships tonight. Very excited. I'm all excited in my pants. Makes me want to dance in my no-no spot. It's, it's going to be a fun night tonight. If you aren't here, I feel real bad for you. I feel real bad for the people that are watching the replay because it's, it's just going to be a blast tonight. Oh, thank you, Killian. Yeah, oh, nice, nice Dutch has some feedback for us as well. All right. Woo! <laughs> Anarchy's getting very excited. I mean, Anarchy's, it, there is a lot of excitement from Anarchy right now. I feel it, bro. Thank you. Cannot wait to talk to you again, man. I cannot wait to talk to you. The, the Anarchy is our art director for the channel. He does a wonderful job. Everybody, clap. Clap for the man. Clap for the man. He deserves it. Clap. I said clap. Clap for Anarchy. Clap now. <laughs> <laughs> Dutch, thanks, dude. All right. Well, I I am just uh, beside myself with goosebumpy anticipation for everything going down in the verse. I'm very happy they're doing this. Um, you know, these are the things that I think made the game feel alive. I'm glad they're inserting uh, these events into the game. I hope they do it more without many hitches. What is going on, Ross? Ross got an ad as he came in here. I got to take care of that. Apologies. Anarchy throwing down yet again. Throwing down that financial support for the channel. So how many of you um, like the fact that Cloud Imperium is now focusing on like these events in game? That perhaps this will be a more common, uh, this will be more commonplace. Thank you, Killian. Thank you. Bless you. I, I will I will toast to that. My fam here tonight with me having a good time tonight. Yes. I've 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 been having a good week this week, and I, I would like to say it's due to all the support from you guys. Like really, you guys have been making me smile all week. 
all week. It is about damn time that I had a good week. Ash. <laughs> Ash, Ash all, knows all too well of my luck. I was just eating dinner and watching Tony Z on SEO. I swear Jared was counting the number of times Tony said, you know. <laughs> was Tony Z saying, you know? Oh, Tony. That is shameful, Tony. You're much better than that. Come on, Tony. <laughs> it's hard being in the spotlight sometimes. And other times, if you're like me, you just don't give a damn. <laughs> you just, you just, you're yourself. People will love you or people will hate you. All right, let's get into the show here. And very excited about this one because we're going to be talking about cap ships, probably going to be talking about dynamic events, probably going to be talking about the focus towards it. And uh, I really am curious to see what this episode is about. Only 10 minutes long, a little bit short, but you know how we do here on the Inside Star Citizen Review. We stretch it out. We stretch it out into a love fest. A love fest, like some sticky sweet taffy. Uh, does, is that uh, is that sultry enough? I feel like mm, I don't I don't think I did justice to it. I don't think I did. Let's watch the show. Bring <laughs> out the ships in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I often wonder when people come in here if they say, what in the hell is Vag? And why are these people so gross? And to them I say, go away. You have no idea what Vag means. Value-added gameplay. How rude and crude do you think we are? What's up, OG? Welcome to the stream, man. Good to see you here, OG. Good to see you now. Whoo, hello, made it. What's up, hello? Welcome to the stream, dude. Uh, who doesn't love the Vag, huh? Who doesn't love the Vag, man? I just can't believe I feel really bad for people catching the replay right now and not feeling all this energy. I mean, the energy is definitely in the room tonight. You can feel it. It's palpable. Thank you, Damon. Old school Damon coming in here, locking it down with that energy. Vag is eternal. <laughs> Vag is eternal. Klesk, that is quotable. That is very quotable right there. Into the universe, we knew that they would be a focal point for combat. We didn't want a solo player to be able to take these ships on by themselves. We wanted it to be a coordinated group effort. And all these weapons coming together, all these new turrets behavior coming together, and it all works as one unit. Tech. <laughs> we just hit 100% hype. Basically Congratulations. Keep hyping it up. Like it came with the gravity of having the capital ships in the scene. And also create a strategy around these ships to kind of take them. I'm really excited about this, and I hope eventually what ends up happening is that all these server issues will get fixed by the infamous Chad McKinney, and that we can have these more freely and not worry about taking out a Delamar and have the ability to have many object containers within uh, our playable uh, verse that we are around that are loading or, or things that are very memory intensive or graphically intensive and eventually get over this hurdle that uh, is this technical hurdle. And I believe that eventually we will get there. But this is exciting. This is an exciting time, man. Very exciting for Star Citizen. Down as well. Yes. And, and that will be fixed, Oz. That was a disgrace. Yes, Oz. Absolutely. I saw that video and I shook my head. I shook it verily left and to the right when I saw a hawk take down an Idris solo. And how I... Cried. <laughs> yes, the more events tests they do, the better it'll get. Absolutely, Dutch. This is a uh, process. Absolutely. Uh, Ross says, I think this year will be a good behind the scenes year, but we won't see most of the fruits until 2022. I think you'll be surprised by 2021. I think that a lot of people are underestimating 2021. I think 2021 is going to be a very nice year. In terms of the development. In terms of the development, I think we're going to have a very nice year. To achieve that goal of combat, we took the high level and then we had to work on all the small pieces that add together. There was no one thing that made... Don't get me talking about financials and business, though, Killian. Collaborative <laughs> effort of lots of little pieces. The main thing I wanted to do when we were oh. bringing in uh, capital ships was ensure that we didn't make the common mistake that a lot of games do. And that's when you bring in something big and new that you make it overpowered. 
was about creating the balance of all these things coming together where there was several different aspects to the, the battle scene itself. Things like proving the turret behaviours, so not only did they attack fighters, but they attacked incoming missiles, which are a huge threat to capital ships. Ooh, that, those guns really took that down. Stomach. That Torp had no chance right there. Nice defensive, uh, nice defensive battery right there, taking out that Torp. You know what? We got on Saturday uh, a really nice clip of good games. One of our friends, one of our Soviet friends from uh, from the community, and he takes out Idris. He takes out Idris very proudly with other comrades. And, and I'll put that highlight out on Saturday. So you guys are going to get to see some Idris action there, which is amazing. But this is this is really exciting. This is like absolutely exciting for me. As the targets of, uh, An SDF, fighters. they're going to talk about shield. Uh, 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 signed we worked on countermeasures to make them sign distance field. Thank you. We've only been talking about that for a year. Both the Apologies on the brain fart. point of view of launching them and from the aggressor's point of dealing with them. We've put a lot of effort into making sure that we balance the way countermeasured worked. They wouldn't spam them all the time. You now have to fire enough off to generate enough noise to hide your ship. And we needed all the components to work to kind of bring a, a, um, Exino for alive, which was the big capital ships. We had the Idris, we had the Javelin. The Idris has the big railgun underneath that needed to have its behavior adjusted so that it always tried to be nose on to Ooh. larger targets and not just to try and use its railgun on a Mustang, it would only pick it for the larger ships. The Javelin is different, it wants to get within the turret range of its target. Whilst the Idris is trying to get its nose onto the target, the Javelin is always trying to they keep do its side against they the larger do. targets to deal with them. Once we had that scene together, it was just oh, like, how do we make do. this sound good? How do we make this look good? You know, and how do we kind of match those expectations that players have with the balance that we implemented? And it ended up looking really nice. We have these big Best ships explosions ships in any game each. ever. It's just saying it. The big thing that changes with this is how many players are in the scene at the time. It can play drastically different if there's only five of you or ten of you trying to take the ship down. But then if some group decides to bring in 30 players in their team, <laughs> It will play drastically different. It sort of worked how we expected. Uh, we knew players would be trying to hijack the things and was amazed by how they had did it. We put a few precautions in there. To All right, new that, emotes delivered. Congratulations, to, guys. To way to keep it going. Yeah, the players go, oh, you know, I use this Good weapon. job, guys. I in at this time, I use this ship uh, at this time. And that's how we brought new it New emotes down. to and the channel. It's really exciting listening to those um, streams. So, you know, we are watching. <laughs> There's definitely areas that we want to improve on. The AI is still not where we want oh, it to be. Oh, those shield effects, man. Target selection. It does a very good job to Ooh. a point, but it, it can still get overwhelmed at times. You know, there's times where I was watching people play and they would do, and basically it was impossible to shoot the Idris down. And I was like, no. And then, and then it was good to figure out why. And then we had some changes. And then sometimes it'd swing the other way where we had 30 Yeah, where the Hawk the solo killed it. Trying to bring this shit down and it <laughs> destroyed itself in 30 seconds. And this is what's really good about having a live environment in Star Citizen is we get to do it as we go. Test, we get to test. Have That's the what we're doing. Involved, test, test, test. Massively helps us as developers. Not talking about the organization either. Evening, and advertising for Montoya and Test Squadron. And, <laughs> and then we can look in the morning, you know. And go, yeah. If you look right, real closer, what happened, you looks know, like good. Review, watching, you know, the turrets shoot down torpedoes. Watching the torpedoes just oh, those torps, the man. Side of these. Wait, I'm telling you. So pretty when those twerps hit. Oh, so damn good. So damn good. Huge ships and the Idris just take it. Watching it all play out has been fantastic. Take it. We want take to take it. capital ship fights further in the future. There's some weapon systems that those ships aren't using yet, which is their, <laughs> their own missile and torpedo systems. We want to provide further expanded combat opportunities for these ships both in terms of the players right. doing it and their right Dutch. Back to you. take that take it best explosions ever oh i this is what i woo i mean ship. that 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 is the dream that is the dream right there that is the dream for me a world of p 
people. Maybe mixed with a few NPC. Okay, I know we're going to have it. But just like that. Flying in that. And it's primarily us as players. That is really what I remember. When I watched the Imagine video, and I, I really had this like cathartic moment about Star Citizen in 2015, early 2015, late 2014. Like, to see the graphical output and to see how far just the looks of it have come is really a testament to what many people bitched and moaned about. Throughout the many years people would bitch and moan about Chris's attention to details slowing down the project. And frankly, that never was an issue for me because I knew that in the long run, that attention to detail that everyone, almost everyone bitched about would give us this that we can see now. So really, where my mind is at is knowing that we've gotten past that point, graphically speaking, and I'm more worried now just about the tentacles and the server-related types of issues so that we can have moments like this. And we can fly through this. And then that, that will be such a great day. And a lot of people really jump on that troll wagon and they and they and they they just they're like you'll never get there blah 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 well a lot of people said it would never get here <laughs> and you never really hear that do you you never really hear that from a lot of content creators that just break it down like hey guys we got this far okay and you'll hear a lot of haters and an activity and they'll just be like, oh, I'll never get any farther than this. I'll never get if it. The only reason it wouldn't get any farther than this has nothing to do right now with what the amazing work from the designers and developers are doing. It's more like on a business uh, standpoint, which is why I focus on financials and stuff. This is great to see. This is really good to see. Really really positive makes me feel so damn good when i see this it really does right the crying gold posts always move absolutely tech absolutely so it might not be as fast as everybody wants you know okay but like to create something that is just really to the eye amazing the detail and to be absorbed in it and to be immersed in it and to be able to log into an experience that you can just like go just lose yourself into, which there's not many games like that. <laughs> I'm having a great time with dual universe right now. Um, having some fun with cyberpunk as well. There's moments of it in cyberpunk. There's quite an, there's a quite a, a, a lot of it in, in dual universe for me. But this, like the just the visual appeal is phenomenal. And I know I'm going to have to upgrade. I know I'm going to have to get a better system eventually down the line. I can play it just fine right now. And I know within the next three to four or five years, I'm going to have to probably upgrade again. And I'm completely fine like that. Harkens back to the 90s when I had to upgrade my 256 megabyte Radeon card to play Wing Commander. And I did it then. And I'll do it again now. <laughs> A lot of people back then said that would never happen. Oh, why would people pay that much for 256 megabytes? People are crazy. Why would people pay? Two, why would people pay? I think at the time it was like 200 bucks for a 256 megabyte Radeon graphics card. And people were laughing like this will never be something that happens. Nobody will spend the money on it. People were just clowning everyone that was buying it. And there were so many people that bought it. It just turned up into a fucking revolution. It, it basically, PCs now from them have continually upgraded since. Because people said, whoa, wait a second. People are actually spending money on this. Maybe we should jump on that. 
Maybe we should take advantage of that and profit a little bit and make new PC components. Wait, people are playing games on PCs? Yes, they are. PC Nation. <laughs> it's the only way to play games on a PC. You dirty console gamers. <laughs> you dirty, dirty, dirty console gamers. It's okay, I play console too. <laughs> Right, Dutch, right. Capital it's absolutely Combat awesome, brought Tech. brought many different game systems into development focus, but one long-discussed technology was essential to ensuring these massive behemoths wouldn't be taken <laughs> down by players mere moments after they arrived. So let's take a look at how SDF shields came to be for the Idris and the Javelin before they're rolled out to all spacecraft in the coming months. There was a lot of work that actually went into getting <laughs> hey, to the Booch, point where we welcome to the stream, bro. impact effects that are defined by the science distance field. SDF shields were a huge part Look at those of the effects. whole suite needed to Whoa! Bring. Whoa! Capital ship combat to fruition. The mesh shape. Are we still in the positive Booch mode, man? I, I want to see positive Booch on the stream before. tonight, Booch. <laughs> <laughs> Our previous shield technology is getting Cheers. quite old now and it had some limitations. Primarily on the setup side, you had to have duplicated data to detect the hits and then that displayed to a completely no! independent bubble mesh, which had no actual relevance to gameplay. It was just purely there for visuals. They're really limited in, in terms of if the wing breaks off, the mesh can't adapt to that. With SDFs, they can. A big reason why we needed new SDF shields as well was because we needed to support the new visual effects on the shields. And I hope it's more than just visual effects, which I think it is, because the biggest issue and the reason I've been arguing um, for uh, sign distance field technology is for the gameplay, for the technicals, so that there are no shield holes. And I know that my, uh, another content creator named Camurel was the first person from Germany who got me on board with knowing what SDF was, getting into the technicals of it. And really, I mean, as visually stunning and as amazing that as this is to look at, I really am hoping it slides over into the technicals, into the gameplay, and that it does plug up a lot of the shield holes because, you know, a lot of people have paid money for these ships and should not have the shield holds uh the shield holes that they do now so but like visually looking fantastic so we could really communicate to the player the firepower and the impact that their firepower had on the ships because we changed the weapon balance a lot of the weapons now especially the size now torpedoes offer so much more firepower than they've ever had in status and that massively changed the demands of the shields and what it takes to take them down so if you're shooting the ship with a size one weapon, you may only see a small little. Oh, I love it. I love the, the reactionary effects due to weapon resizing. That is really cool. Really nice design feature on that. That it's not just like one area of effect splash damage on every sized weapon. I like that the sizing is different on the splash effect. That is very cool. The shield, but if you shoot it with a size 10 cannon, the impact may wrap nice. around half of the ship. Oh, yeah. Different colors, too. We talked system, about that. It, just, it would go blue, it would go blue, and then it would go when the shield was down. You had no idea whether you were 99% of the shield face or you had one. Whereas with SDF shields, we've got a lot more flexibility now. In Everybody, everybody take a drink here for Ross, what he did for us. Everybody take a couple drinks here. Thank you so much, dude. Hold on a second. Am I out? I'm almost out. I'm going to have to pour a little bit more Ross. Gifting out 10 subscriptions, man. Ross, you're the man, dude. Thank you so much for helping out the channel and supporting us, man. It's people like you keep us going. Thank you so much. People don't understand. Sometimes that's what it takes in order for me to keep doing what I'm doing. Thank you, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's just pay respects to Ross right now. Everybody slouch, take a drink right now. Nice little break, nice little interlude. Let's remind ourselves why we're here. Fun, chilling out, having a good time. It's the main reason, great open minds discussion. It's really what it's all about. Slancha, everyone, slancha. Thank you, Ross, thank you. 
All right, cool. Booch says pause the vid at 7.39. What's up, Oni? <laughs> You're here now, dude. Welcome, man. You came in at a good time. Ross just dropped a love bomb on the stream, dude. <laughs> Bringing in lots of caps for this one. <laughs> Bringing in lots of caps, man. This is great. Remind me, Booch. I'm going to hit 739. We'll pause it. We'll see what we're doing here. Love bomb sounds sticky. Well, you know what time it is for you then, Tech. <laughs> I think you just uh, gave yourself an answer to what you need to do next, Tech. <laughs> Thank you, Killian. Killian coming in as well. Look at you guys. Bless you. Bless you, bless you, bless you. As more things start to happen in Star Citizen and more things become more permanent and, and we get over some of these tech hurdles, you'll see me be much more active with the organization and we'll do things together. Right now, playing a lot of Dual Universe. If you guys are willing to give that a try, come on in. We're having a good time over there as well. Uh, but this is going to make me want to log in and play. Uh, and just to see what's going on and have a good time like this is this is definitely going to be one of those events That's going to bring me back, which is exactly what cloud Imperium is doing it I think it's a very smart thing that they do this. Thank you Killian. Thank you Ross. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you But it reads on that supposed to pause here soon says, the says Booch. It gets closer to coming down that gives a, a huge gameplay impact We have several techniques how to displays and and sort of have the SDF control individual particles. You start to look at using mesh based particles, being able to actually splat the mesh particles. Into oh the yeah. Shit. And then on that mesh we can play animated textures. We had what we call glue. So there was like a glue option to, to essentially. All right. We paused it right there for Oh, nice. Nice. Good suggestion. You'll see here Sid got around having to SDF the entire JAV model by putting SDFs on individual JAV components like the bridge and the engines and whatnot. I like it. I like it. So when you're shooting up engine nostrils, uh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Only subscribe. Oh, shoot. Uh, send it to me in a private message, Spooch, because you're not a, a subscriber. Send it to me in a, in a private message because I've got the paywall set up so that only <laughs> subscribers can like post links, dude. But send that to me. Uh, yeah, Schnozbot got a little bit upset. Sorry. I programmed him that way. <laughs> but this is great. This is wonderful. To see this. They literally did it around the components. You can see it around the, uh, the wings. Uh, the smaller, the, the dorsal fins on the, uh, starboard side down there, midsection. You can see it on the engines, the aft engines. Yes, yes, absolutely. This is great. He was sending a link to Veg. Uh, not that some of the objects are tied to the SDF field. Noticeably, the turrets and guns. Also note, there's still a mesh being rendered on top of SDF. Yes. Yes. And because of this, I'm really looking at at least the model version here that we're seeing where there's literally a plug in every direction so that there are no shield holes, which is very, very, very welcome. Very welcome news if this is in fact what's happening. So when one of those objects is destroyed, which would deform the shape of the jab as a whole, it's not an issue because the other uh, children objects aren't calculating that. Great info, Booch. Great info, dude. That's really cool. Oh, oh, that's really cool. Thanks, Booch. Make the that make that projection. We could kind of control where that actually is offset from the ship, and and we settled on the name glue. And then we also have glue. a volumetric component where it renders a volumetric shape, which ties all of these elements together for the final effect. We knew quite early on that we were also going to be able to use science distance fields for other types of effects. So. We needed a safer type of effect, and I thought that atmospheric entry was a more safe effect. It was the first bit of tech to use the SDF. The effects are colliding with the SDF, and it allows the fire and flames to 
hugs the surface. <laughs> Just for a second, I swear to God, I thought this was taken from one of my videos where I show the entry effects on exactly that in that order. The car to all, the 890 jump, and the, and the, uh, <laughs> the Connie. I don't see a accreditation to DG360 on there. <laughs> it's probably not for just me. It's probably just a, a coincidence. We All we've got at the moment is the actual impact effects. What we actually need to do in the future is actually have the powering on and powering off states as well. The initial release of SDF Shields is just for the Idris and Javelin. Oh, and it's only God damn, really that's so pretty. Their detection of hits and the displaying of hits. Going forward, so we plan good. to roll this shield tech out to the rest of the ships. And when okay, okay, have, okay, 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 okay. Seriously, though. I've played a lot of Sims out there. I have not seen anything that looks that good. Ever. That looks so damn good. The ship's in a pretty good position. We are going to start looking at fleshing out the various types of shields, the style, the manufacturer and the race. So Banduel may have a completely different looking shield yes. than That's exactly what shield. we wanted. That's exactly what we wanted. Make them blood red. Make them scary blood red. Make those vandals red. Come on, you SOBs. We want uh we want Vandal like that blood red. We want uh Banu. We want it like a nice kind of greeny yellow. Make a greeny yellow. Make a greeny yellow. What should the Xi'an be? The, should the Xi'an be like a blue purple? I mean, Terra's, you know, Terra's us, humanity, looks like we're going to be blue. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking like a purple kill. Like, like a, you know. True Vandal don't use shield, says Klesk. <laughs> they go in hardcore. They go in raw. Ooh, baby, I like it raw. Ooh, baby, I like it raw. They're the ODBs. They're the Wu-Tang Clan. The verse, if you will. The Vandal. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the work that we've done for the shield i don't know the SDF i don't effects, know will just help us with our effects in general there's loads of other ways we can use sdfs there's loads of other ways that we can use lots of the shimmy, shimmy, yeah. <laughs> came together to make the shield effects we could just use them generically for vfx in our game in general and that's going to just give us that next kill, level yes, of quality kill, and yes. <laughs> they well, don't we leave, the most recent Dutch. big step in space combat came to be with the arrival of capital ships like the Idris and Alpha 3.12. That the Javelin benefits from many of those same technologies during the brand new Xenothread event. And that while SDF shields were a huge part in making both of those things possible, the next big step forward for combat is when they come online for every other spacecraft. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you all next week. Good question, Booch. Good question. Hope I'm hoping it's actually through SDF. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, I think they need to explore it. I really do. I would like them to go a little bit deeper. You know, goes along with what we're talking about. <laughs> goes along with what we're talking about. But that was exciting, and I really hope that um, this goes without a hitch. And uh, I understand why Delamar was taken out. Wonderful discussion here done by our community talking about, um, you know, why Delamar was taken out. We were talking about server-based issues and the, and the hurdles that I see in 2021. I do think 2021 will bring some surprises that are positive uh, a lot more than some of the other people are. Uh, still very, very concerned about the financials. I talk about that in a in a previous video about a month ago. You guys can check that out. And a lot of people would go, oh, no, why would you be when the revenues are so good? Talk about that there. Very curious to see what 2020's p and is going to look like. Uh, but for the development and for the progress that I'm seeing, I think we're going to be pleasantly surprised in 2021. I do want to see them go deeper into the veg. We want more value-added gameplay. Thank you, everybody, for joining me here tonight on the Inside Star Citizen Review. It is an absolute pleasure to hang with you guys, to just experience this with you guys. Uh, I have an amazing time. It is so much fun. Thank you so much for just taking the time out to be here, talk, and have a good time. It really is a, a, a truly, truly fun thing to do with you guys that is just like 
I've been doing it nearly for two years now. Just the best day of the week is Thursday. It's, it's always the best day for me. Like Thursday is a very happy day for me. So thank you for making it a, a, a happy day once again. And of course, I will see you guys on the next vid or stream. Don't forget when the vid comes out, support it, share it, like it, break the algorithm, do the things that you guys have to do that you guys know you need to do. If you didn't make this live, I feel sorry. I feel sorry you didn't make it live. There was a lot of energy tonight. There was a lot of excitement tonight. And uh, I hope that feeds through to you so that you guys come in and you join us live and you have a great time. Uh, special thanks to Ross tonight for uh, that that wonderful gifting. Obviously, Killian, Damon, Dutch, Anarchy, all you guys that uh, helped out tonight. Tech, uh, everyone that helped out tonight financially for the channel. Thank you so much. Uh, more on the way for the channel. Lots of good times. I will see you on the next vid or stream.